Trinity United Methodist Church of Espy. I'm Pastor Kelly Coker Ross, and this morning I'm joined by so many wonderful people. I have my helpers here um, in the church, and I also have you joining me on the internet. Before we get started, I'd like to offer up some announcements to you. Um, we are going to be beginning our, be beginning our uh, Bible exploration classes, and they will start next Monday. So this Monday, uh, put your feet up and take a break with your labor on uh, Labor Day. But next Monday, get ready to go at 6 o'clock. And um, stay tuned. Next Sunday, I'll be making some announcements how we will be doing it. We'll be meeting in person and um, also meeting online. So I'm trying to figure that out if we'll be doing Zoom or if there's a hybrid. And I'm trying to do some research, so please um, bear with me because um, this world is new to me just like everybody else. And um, I'm hoping that you'll, you'll all be patient, but you will join us. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing when we do Bible exploration. It's not just about study, but it's about you reading the Bible and talking what you see on um, the word saying and doing research together on the historical facts of the Bible um, and looking about how it can affect us today and looking at the connection. And if you talk to anyone, um, who goes to it. We've been doing this for um, a year now. We took a little break over the summer, but if you talk to anyone, if you've never read the Bible before, if you've never read it, if um, you've been exposed to it your whole life and you read it every day, um, or if you're just in between, here and here you read it, I promise you, you will find new and amazing things, and I continually find new and amazing things in the Bible, so please consider joining us. Um, pray about it, and um, if you have any questions, please contact me here at the church. On this website, you will find my personal cell phone. You'll also find the church's phone number. So there's also a way that you can send me a message email. Some way, shape, or form, you can surely get in touch with me or just even put in the comments below and we'll be glad to contact you. So at this time, I'd like for us to get ready to go into a time of worship. And um, I'm going to ask uh, Lanny Lee, who is my liturgist this morning, to take us to worship. Welcome to this community of faith. We come seeking hope and courage for the future. Here you will find peace, hope, love, and joy. We come weighed down by difficulties in our lives. Here you will find Jesus, who will take your burdens on himself. Lord, we come to you this day in need of your mercy and love. Amen. Will you please join me in our opening prayer this morning? Gracious God, we come this day seeking courage and hope for the future. Our world is in peril. Heal these wounds and quiet the words of war. Help us to be those who bring peace in our families and communities. Banish the darkness of doubt and fear. Anoint us with your light and love that we may spread the good news of your mercy to everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I invite you in our opening hymn, Seek Ye First, and you can find it on page 405 in your hymnals at home. Some of you may know this one by heart, but um, if, even if you hum along, I just invite you to sing, and we'll be singing two verses and then we will be repeating those two verses again.
to join me in our prayers for the people. And as we go into a time of prayer, I'd like to lift up um, some names to you. I normally don't mention people by last name because of privacy on the internet. However, this morning, um, our church, um, we lost somebody this week in our church, and um, her name is Lola. And um, her husband and family are mourning the loss of, of Lola. And um, I just want to offer her name up to you. She was such a sweet, um, dear woman in our, in our church. I love to see her here when we were meeting in person. So I just want to offer, um, offer her up. For those of you that do know Lola, um, I just um, offer that you keep their family in your prayers. Um, in addition, this morning, I'd like to lift up um, all of our people that are in um, our nursing homes, one in particular, Ralph, who is, uh, their family have been longtime members here, and I just want you to keep Ralph in your prayers. I want to lift up Mary Ann, um, Pastor Chuck, I want to lift up David and Marissa, and Janet and Jim and Tracy. I want to lift up John and um, his wife as they um, continue their healing um, their healing process through COVID. I want to list, lift up to you the name of Karen, Beverly, and a dear friend of mine, Danan, um, Zachary. I want to lift up my son, Spencer, as he continues um, his uh, first semester at Millersville and all of the students that go there. I want to lift up the names of Dan and Michelle. Michelle, um, uh, one of our members or one of our um, longtime watchers here at church has been going through some healing process as well. And um, I just want to lift her up as she continues to heal. I want to lift up the names of Beth and Mary Ann, of Mark and Linda, of Clark, Ed and Linda and Colleen, and um, all of her co-workers at Mercy Fitzgerald. I want to lift up the Geisinger staff. I also want to lift up um, all of those that are military right now that are um, ready to go for boot camp and that are finishing up boot camp. We have a couple of my son's um, friends from school that are getting ready to go to um, tours right now. So just be in thought for them as well. Um, I want to lift up Bloomsburg University. Um, there's been quite a few uh, diagnosis of COVID on our university here in our backyard. So please be in prayer for our community, um, for our college professors, for our, for the staff, for the admin staff, and all of those that are affected right now um, that are in isolation and quarantine. We just want to be mindful of those. Um, there are some students that are living off campus. On campus, the students um, do have food delivery. And I want to be in prayer and just kind of figure out how Trinity can help to support those students that are living off campus that are in quarantine that do not have food delivery. So I know there's been some issue about that, and I want to keep be mindful and keep them in our prayers. I also want to lift up this morning um, our country's president and leaders for those running for office, um, not just for presidency, but for other offices as well. I want to be mindful of our homeless and our hungry for our lonely, our fearful, and mentally ill. I want to be mindful of those that are working in essential roles, especially in those neighborhoods that are affected by COVID, for those that work in stores, in manufacturing, the service industry, and transportation. I want to be um, continually mindful of all the medical staff, and even in our high schools, um, our middle schools, and elementary schools, I want to be mindful of all of those teachers, um, the admin staff and support staff that um, take care of our children every day and also the, for our children in those settings. So let us go into a time of prayer to the Lord. Dear Gracious and Heavenly Father, we come here this morning with so many worries on our heart. It seems like the days just keep dragging on. And our souls have become so weary to the suffering of the world and especially the suffering in our own backyard. God, there's so many people right now that are being laid off from their jobs. There's so many small businesses that are going under. And God, there's just so much angst. There's so much division as we continue to talk about justice. Judging a person by the color of their skin or by the uniform that they wear, by judging a person by their gender, judging a person by what they believe, 
And Lord, instead of coming together as Christians, we just fight amongst one another. Lord, for all of this unrest today, Lord, I just ask for your hand to come in the midst of it all, to pluck out your people and rise them up to be the voice of peace, the voice of reason, and the voice of truth. And as they are the voice of reason, the voice of truth, Lord, may they do it in a loving way, in a loving way that shines the light to a future that we cannot quite comprehend being in the midst of all of this darkness. But Lord, I just ask for your healing hand and suffering of all of your people and all those that have yet to know you. Lord, for the loss, for the countless losses of all of our people, for those that have died of pandemic, for those that have died for an ongoing, ongoing illness of cancer, for those that have died out of an accident, Lord, that we just did not see coming, for those that lived a long life, a long, beautiful life, and even though it's bitter to say goodbye, may we find the praise to know that we've been touched by those lives in our, in our life. God, we lift this all up to you in a way that we can get a second wind and a healing breath, that your spirit may be alive in everything that we do, everything that we say. Lord, we ask for those right now that are suffering, may you bring them safe passage, may you bring them healing in a way that we don't understand, but in a way that glorifies you so that we can be living testimonies of your great mercy, of your great power, and of your great love. Lord, we pray for the nations to come together. We pray for our own nation to be healed and come together, that we look up again and remember why we were here to begin with, that we were here blessed. You breathed your life in us, Lord, and we need to remember that. So Lord, we lift this all up to you today. In the words that your son Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, I invite Lanny to lead us in Scripture. Today's Old Testament lesson comes from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said, Moses and has sent to Moses and Aaron in Egypt. This month will be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell each man, tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. Having taken into account the number of people there are, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep of the goat or the goats. Take them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at, at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they will eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roasted over a fire with the heads, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste, it is the Lord's Passover. On the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the, house, the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is the day you are to commemorate, for the generations to come shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Today's Gospel comes from Matthew 
chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For wherever two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? Dear gracious and heavenly Father, I invite you this morning with the Holy Spirit and the power that the Spirit brings. Open my heart, open my mind that I may receive your word and open my mouth to breathe the word to all of the people, Lord. God, open our hearts and our minds to receive you that we may receive and be transformed. In your precious name we pray, amen. I have to make a confession this morning. I love the Old Testament. The Old Testament to me is so rich and I want to spend a couple of weeks um, as we go forward in the Old Testament. I want us to take a look at Exodus as we look at um, and remembering everything that happened. Because I believe that when we look and we remember where we came from, it leads us to the cross. And this morning, I want to talk to you. I want you to open your Bibles. I want you to open it to um, Exodus. And it is in the Old Testament. It's in the very beginning. So I want you to look there in chapter 12, and I want you to look as we look at verses 1 through 14. I want to talk to you about remembering the Passover this morning. I want to talk about the, the deliverance of what the Passover had to bring and all of the promises that God brought to fruition with his people. So I want us to take a look and just dive into this in chapter 12. And to put it into context, I want you to understand who Moses was in this whole process. You see, once upon a time, the people living in Egypt were living in a time when God had spoke through Joseph and all of the people knew who Joseph was. And over time, there were rulers that came into place and they forgot who Joseph was. They forgot who the Israelites were and the importance of the Israelites. And it got to the point where even the Israelites forgot who they were in God. They started to move away into worshiping the gods of Egypt. And as they worshiped the gods of Egypt, they found themselves in a time of oppression, in a time of servitude, and in a time of slavery. They were so oppressed, and it got to the point where they did follow the law, and they were multiplying. They were multiplying so greatly that the ruler of the time wanted to put death to all new Israelites that were being born. And we all, um, I, if we don't know, I invite you to look at, the, look at the Bible and go back to Genesis and look at Joseph as we lead up to Moses. But for many of us, we know how Moses came about. We know that Moses was saved, and there was a reason why he was saved, because Moses was going to deliver his people out of slavery. And Moses went to Pharaoh, and he yelled to Pharaoh to let my people go. And what happened beyond this point was amazing. There were ten Plagues. And we come to the 10th plague, and this 10th plague was so amazing and what it did to deliver the people. And we look in chapter 12, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this, is, this month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year, year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. So this plague that we're about to look at, the plague of, um, that would begin the Festival of Unleavened Bread. It would be the first day in Passover, and I hope you see the relationship that it brings into the cross. Tell the whole community of Israel that on that tenth day, you're to take the lamb for your family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor. So you can see right away, God is looking out for the smallest and the least of. 
And I love this portion because for some of us, we are in community by being just a single person or a small family. And God is already talking about bringing everyone into community with each other. So he tells them that the whole land they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people that there are. You are determined the amount of the land needed in accordance with each person that will eat. So some of the lambs will be larger, some will be smaller. And even if they're smaller and there's only one or two people in the household, bring everybody together. The animals you choose must be a year old male without defect, and you may take them from sheep or the goats. So this is to be perfect, a perfect lamb of innocence, no blemish whatsoever. And it is to be taken because of its innocence, is to be taken clean. So if you can see that whole thing about the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, Jesus was so innocent and he was so clean without any blemish. And this in the first day of Passover, this is what God is looking at and telling his people for the first time. This is the first promise that will bring us together into Passover. The animal that you choose, take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. So I want you to think about this. Why were they to keep that particular lamb for, 14, for four days? So you think about a sweet little lamb or a sweet little goat, and it's with you for four days. You start to grow a little bit of affection towards that animal. If you've ever, um, I know many of you probably won't bring a lamb into your house. You might bring a kitten or a puppy, but I want you to think of that attachment that you would have to that animal. Because that attachment is so important to understand what that sacrifice truly means. Now, we were lucky to have Jesus Christ in our life walk among us, and all of the people grew attached to Jesus Christ. He was a friend, a rabbi, a teacher so dear to us. And this is the same way in the original, going back to the Old Testament and looking at this sweet little lamb. For four days, you start to grow attached and it starts to make sense why you would let go of that attachment. It would be a true sacrifice in that moment. And understand how God brings all of these people together to do it at the same time, the same ritual at the same time. This was the same component of worship. And it's a type of worship that we have today where we come together doing those particular rituals. Then he says to them, Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides of the door, on the tops of the door frames and on the houses where they will eat the lamb. So the blood is to be put on your door frame. And this is how you will eat the lamb. That same night you're to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs. So you're to take that lamb in whole and eat it with the bitter herbs. Now the bitter herbs at that time were to signify the bitterness and the sorrow that the Israelites were suffering all of these decades. All of this time being a servant and the tears that they had looking up to God asking for deliverance. I want you for that moment to put yourself in the place of all of these Israelites. I want you to think for a moment all of that had been forgotten about their God. They had been abused. They had been separated. Their own children were taken away from them. They didn't even know who their God was anymore, yet they cried to a God that they had forgotten to deliver them from the slavery of the Egyptians, day after day, building their buildings ignoring their own families, but taking care of the Egyptians' families. Worshiping gods that they didn't even understand, worshiping gods that would eventually oppress them and put them in a place of separation from their own God. And now here they were, eating these bitter herbs, knowing what the tears and the frustration and the hurt had taken them away from their own people. And God tells Moses to tell them, do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water. You see, in that time, the way that the, the gods were of Egypt, they were supposed to eat the meat raw. That's how they worshiped their own gods. The full-grown sheep, the ones that were blemished, were the ones that were sacrificed to gods that were not our God. And they were eating the meat raw. And God wanted to separate himself from those false gods. 
They didn't want it to be boiled or to be separated. If they had separated the lamb, it would take away the true sacrifice. The boiling of it would only tear it apart and they wouldn't be together in community. It would have to break apart the lamb to boil it because you couldn't boil a whole lamb. There would be nothing large enough to boil it. But they were to roast it over a fire in a hole. Do not eat the meat raw. You want the head and the legs and the internal organs together. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. Here is the situation where they are burning the whole thing and they're looking at the whole of the meat. And God is saying to them, I want you to trust me. I want you to come together in community again and remember who I am. I want you to remember that I am the creator of all, that I am the God of mercy, the God of love, and I want you to do this together, and I want you to trust me. I want you to leave nothing behind, but to put your total trust in me. And this is how you are to eat it with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Get ready. This is the message that God was telling his people, that you are getting ready to go. Put your clothes on, put your cloak ready, put your staff in your hand, put those shoes on your feet. Because once we do this, it is go time. Eat it in haste. And remember, it is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt, and I will strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment with all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. There is no other gods. God is looking down upon this whole community, and I wonder, I wonder if there were any people, any Israelites in that time that didn't follow the rules of God. I also wonder if in that time there were Egyptians that saw all the great powers that God had possessed for every one of those plagues in that time of Egypt, if they had seen it and they had heard these words and they too believed in the one only Lord, I am the Lord. God is telling them there is nothing that you can rely on but me, not Pharaoh, not the Egyptians, nobody, no other gods but me. The blood will be a sign for you and on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. How often have we forgotten these times of Moses? How often have we forgotten who God is in our lives? The blood in which was on their doors is the blood that we look to for the cross, the blood that covers us. These words are so important. If we want to know who Jesus Christ is, we need to know who God was, who God is, and who God will always be in our lives. We have allowed so many things in our lifetime to take us away from God, and we've forgotten about the mercy of God upon all of his people. We forgot about the great mercy that delivers us, the hand that plucks us out when we are lost and we are gone. We've forgotten the original words that took us into a brand new country that allowed us to worship a one true God, us ourselves, over 200 years ago, that brought us into the United States of America that we could come and worship a God. And we've allowed the world to take us away from a God that we know. We've allowed a country to take us away. We've allowed our own neighborhoods to take us away from the Lord. And we allow it day after day, hour after hour, minute by minute, we have forgotten who we are in God. We've forgotten great God's great mercy when he sent us his son, Jesus Christ, and that blood that washed us clean. The perfect blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ, who was so perfect when he was faced with his own death. He wept and he cried, but he accepted what God sent him for. He accepted it so willingly on a cross to deliver us that we may know God for all of our days and yet 
day after day we turn our back on those promises. We forget how, how perfect that deliverance is, and we, we forget about those promises that God made to us, and we forget every step of our way. We are in so need of deliverance today. I need deliverance every day when I wake. Every day there's something that hits me right between the eyes, and I forget in that one moment who God is in my life. For some of you out there, you may be suffering with an illness and you've forgotten. For some of you out there, you may be in a moment of your life where there's so much happening. It's coming at you so quickly and you forget that God is there to pluck you out. And we need to go back and we need to remember. We need to remember who God is in our life in that moment when he plucked us out. If I go back to my very first time when I remember who God was, I wasn't there the day of my actual baptism, but I remember that day so clearly when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and that was the beginning. It was just the beginning. It was the start. I put my shoes on, I put my cloak on my belt, and I started a journey. And in my life, things have happened over and over again that makes me forget it's so important, and this is why it was so important for God to tell his people of that time, you need to celebrate this every year so that you remember. Because if we don't celebrate it, we forget. We take it for granted, and we forget that God is there every step of the way, no matter what happens in our life. And things are going to happen. We are subject to the will of other people. We are subject to the changes of this world. And we need to be the ones, we need to be the ones to make the change in our own life so that we can bring that remembrance to other people. Jesus Christ, when he died for us, it was a way of dying knowing that we would sin even beyond the cross, that we would have to step back and take a deep breath and stop and remember that first day, just like every good Jewish person does, in the festival of the unleavened bread, we needed to remember who Jesus Christ is and was and who will always be. There would be a time in that festival of the unleavened bread when God would tell them that you should have no yeast for your bread. There should not be any yeast because yeast represented sin. And sin puffs us up every day. The sin that comes into our life that we accept as common takes us away from the Lord. There are things that you're doing in your life right now that you need to get rid of, that you need to go forward and stop trying to be like the world and start, start trying to be like Jesus Christ. I know you want to fit in. I know that there are things that anger you so much that you just want to get away and you want to say the things that come out of your mouth that are hurtful to other people. And it's not just that it's hurtful to other people, but it's hurtful to you. You're not making the transformation in your life and it's taking you away from God. And that's exactly what happened with those people at that time. They had become so ingrained with what was happening with the Egyptians. They had become the Egyptians. They had become the world away separate from God. In our own remembrance of who we were in Jesus Christ. In that own remembrance of remembering all of God's promises coming into our life. It's when we truly get our second wind to be something in Christ. To be the only thing in Christ. That we can be the only thing for other people. But so many people are so lost not knowing what to do next. What to do next is to simply come and worship. And I'm not talking about just worshiping on a Sunday morning. I'm talking about looking around you and seeing those blessings in your life that you can stop and tell God that you're thankful. Looking for that worship outside your door that you have a second wind, that you can take that breath. It's looking at the worship all around you and the people that you see in your church, that you see in your community, that can lift you up and lift you out. It's putting your hand out to other people and saying, I see you, I know you, and I love you even when 
I don't agree with you. It's looking out and sharing the Lamb of God. Just like those people did with that lamb of that day. If there was one or two people in a household and the lamb was too big, they opened their door and they shared in community and worship with one another. They shared the love of Christ. Not only did they share the love of Christ, but they shared the redemption of Christ. Getting ready to go. We need to be those people to get ready to go and get ready to a brand new day. A day in which we can celebrate who we are in God. We need to remember who we are. I don't know what you're going through today, but if your day is resembling anything like mine, I know I get up and I worry about my son at college. I worry about my husband when he goes to work. I worry about the people in my congregation that are affected by the pandemic. I get worried about the people of color that are out there right now. Friends of mine who live in different cities where there is a lot of injustice. I get worried about the police officers that go out there that I know and love that are really good, just and righteous men and women. I know that I get worried about so many things about my children going to school. I get worried about the teachers. And quite frankly, I get worried about my own health. But in those moments, I need to go to my knees and I need to remember the promise of God. I need to remember the deliverance that he gave his people and I need to eat my own bitter herbs and tears of all of the things of the past and remember that even when those times were hard, even when those times were bitter, God always kept his promise and God always delivered. In our own moments of frustration, in our own moments of fear, God never leaves us. So it's up to us to get ready to go. It's up to us to get ready to remember those promises and move forward. And the only way to do it is to draw closer to God, to draw near to him in everything that we do, everything that we say. We need to stand there at our own readiness to remember who God was, and to draw near to him in worship, to draw near in him in study, to draw near to him in prayer, to draw near to him means that we need to let go of the past. We need to let go of those things that held us and bound us to sin, to sorrow, to fear. We need to get ready to let that go and to promise that God's great mercy is here for us. And we're ready for a brand new tomorrow, just like the people were of that time. So where are you today? Are you stuck? Are you stuck in the past? Are you getting so struck in the presence that you can't get past everything that's happening, that you can't look to God? Go to your knees. Go to your knees to the Lord and ask him to deliver you. No. Let me say that again. Go to the Lord and tell him to deliver you. Reach your hand up to him and say, Lord, I am tired of being stuck down. Lord, I am tired of being fearful. Lord, I am tired of being angry. Lord, I am tired of fighting. And I am ready to go. I put the blood on my door frame to let you know that I am yours. I put the blood of Jesus Christ on my door frame and I have said to you, Lord, everything I have is yours and I am ready to go. I want you to be that person just like me who knows there is a God. I want you to be the person like me who knows that even in all of that bitterness, there is something good for tomorrow. Even when there is that little thing that gets us stuck even when there's that big thing that gets us stuck, that there is a God who's ready to pluck us up and to deliver us. You said that prayer earlier, to deliver you from evil. No matter what it takes, you're willing to let God deliver you, no matter what it takes. The Israelites on that day, no matter what it took, they were ready. They were done. 
This was it. And it was go time. They didn't know what was going to happen beyond that day. But they knew that it was not going to be good. But they were ready. So are you ready even though you don't know what it is? I know I am. Because here's what I know in my heart of hearts, in my soul of soul, through the Spirit of God. That no matter what happens, God hasn't left me yet. And if all of his promise is so true in the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New, one thing he has proved over and over and over again is his promise is always delivered. And if his promise is always delivered, we are delivered. Brothers and sisters, it's go time. Trust the Lord to deliver you. And I promise you, just like he promised us, he will not let us down. He hasn't, and he won't. It's go time. Let us pray. Dear Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much this morning, and we know that the time is coming. We're living in a time of so much unrest, but if you've shown us, there's been so many other times of unrest. God, we draw closer to you day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. We come to our knees before you, Lord, trusting you knowing that in this moment that we need to remember who we are. Remind us again, Lord. Fill our hearts with passion. Let us remember that when it was go time back then, you delivered. When it was go time in the time of Jesus Christ, you delivered. In our own history, of our own country, when it was go time, you delivered. We need to remember God. We need to remember our own go time. Strike in our hearts a brand new breath that we could be alive in you. At a readiness, Lord, we have our feet set on you. Help us to put our shoes on and be ready to walk in your way. Give us the courage to know that no matter what this world brings us, you're with us and you will not leave us. Help us to remember the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood that delivered us that we may have complete freedom in you, O oh God. Get us ready, Lord. Amen. In our preparedness and our readiness, I ask you, and I invite you actually, to give our affirmation of faith. And for those of you that have this ahead of time, please say it with me. If not, then just follow along and say these words in your heart. We believe in one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ. God manifests the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord, for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will be realized in human society and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I invite you to offer one another a sign of peace. And um, for those of you here, we do it like this. And for those online, please offer a sign of peace below in the comments.
Multiply them and use them to care for your church, to reach and bless your world. All in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. There's an old hymn this morning for our closing hymn that I would like you to um, sing along with me, and it's Near My God to Thee. Um, this is a song I remember. Um, I chose this specifically because it reminds me of the day when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And it was a song that was sung. There was two songs that were sung that day. One was just as I am, as I gave myself to God. But there's this one song, Nearer My God to Thee. And I want to tell you a little story before we go into um, the music. One of the things in an old country church in which I grew up in, um, my grandmother was the complete source of my faith. She was a woman who brought me in um, to church every Sunday. She was a woman who prayed, who read her Bible. And she was one of those people that I always wanted to be like. I'm not like my grandmother. And I know my cousin Paula um, watches this out on the internet and she could tell you I am not like my grandmother. Um, but one of the things that my grandmother was always neat about was letting us choose our own gifts of who we were. She always was excited that the type of different people that we all were, but there was one thing that she always wanted for her family, dependent of our gifts. And she wanted all of us to come close to God. And it wasn't because she was this um, woman who was loud and boisterous, but she was a woman who loved God so much that she couldn't fathom any family member of hers not knowing who God was. So when we sing this song this morning, I want you to sing it in the spirit of how you are with God, drawing closer to him. It's a constant reminder when I accepted God, I remember sitting next to her and her reaching out her hand to me and tears in her eyes and she didn't express anything other than tears and a sweet wrinkled hand on my hand. Knowing in that moment that her little 12 year old granddaughter had accepted God as her own. And we sang this hymn and I sang it through tears in my voice and tears in my eyes, knowing that all I wanted to do the rest of my life was grow nearer to God. I want you to sing these words and feel these words, just like I did as a 12 year old little girl wanting to draw closer to the Lord. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a saint like my grandmother was, or whether you're a little stinker like I am. God wants you. He wants you so much. He wants to just bring you into the fold and know that you are loved and that his great mercy is there for you. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, he wants you. So sing these words with me, you're my God to thee. And if you're at home, you can find it on your hymnal, page 528. 
And if you are, don't have access to these words, that's okay. Just listen to them and say them in your heart. Amen. Go in peace.